You know, I've been nice about Sam Bankman-Fried up until this point, but it appears that he's now just trying to ruin my YouTube channel, and I'm losing my patience with him. I've videos with titles like Top 5 Corporate Frauds, Top 10 Bankrupt Billionaires, Top 10 Craziest Ponzi Schemes, and Top 10 Craziest Rogue Traders. And the comment sections of all of those videos have filled up with people saying, but what about Sam Bankman-Fried and FTX? Took me a very long time to make those videos. I don't really have time to remake all of them. And so he's essentially ruined a big part of my YouTube channel. On top of that, because of my most recent video on the collapse of FTX, where I made the mistake of mentioning the whole sultry wood nymph situation, which the mainstream media are possibly covering up for some reason, the comments of that video are filled with fighting tribes of wood nymphophiles and wood nymphophobes. And I wasn't at all aware of these subcultures or the offence that I would cause them. Then there's the New Balance people who've been hounding me on Twitter because I mentioned their god-awful shoes in last Friday's video. So I'm not at all happy with what's been going on. The other person who has up until now been uninvolved in this story, who's possibly more frustrated than I am, is John Ray III, the new chief executive of FTX. He's an insolvency professional who's been hired in to make order of the mess that is FTX and Alameda Research. John Ray III, or JR3 as his friends call him, Okay, I made that up, but it's it's what I'm going to be calling him. Uh, but JR3 has plenty of experience in cleaning up corporate messes. He oversaw the liquidation of Enron more than 20 years ago and has described the FTX bankruptcy as the worst case of corporate failure he's seen in more than 40 years. In a court filing that was submitted yesterday, he says that he had never seen such a complete failure of corporate control and such a complete absence of trustworthy financial information. Now, just to remind you, he oversaw the liquidation of Enron, and this is his statement about FTX. So JR3, it would appear, is maybe more annoyed with Sam Bankman-Fried and his motley crew of renegade teenagers than I am. But of course, JR3 will at least be handsomely rewarded for his irritation, and no one's paying me to deal with the wood nymph activists, New Balance extremists. Oh, and also there are the adults who are claiming that Harry Potter is not a children's book. I had forgotten about them and the magic spells that they've been casting at me for the last week. Anyhow, JR3 describes FTX and Alameda Research as plagued with compromised systems integrity, faulty regulatory oversight, and a concentration of control in the hands of a very small group of inexperienced, unsophisticated, and potentially compromised individuals. He doesn't clarify in the filing in what way these people are compromised, so feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Anyhow, before I dig any deeper, let me tell you quickly about today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Blinkist. Blinkist is an app that helps you understand the most important ideas in over 5,500 non-fiction books in around 15 minutes each. You can either read or play the books on your phone. The best thing is that it's not just a summary of the book, it's put together in an interesting and engaging manner. The people at Blinkist are really good at extracting the most important concepts and then making them digestible. As regular viewers know, I read quite a lot, but I often find myself buying more books than I've time to read. With Blinkist, I can listen to lots of new titles when I'm commuting, and if I find one especially good, then read the full book. I also enjoy using it as a way to refresh my memory of a book that I've read a while back. They have a new feature called Blinkist Connect, which allows every Blinkist premium plan to be shared by two different accounts at no additional cost. I have a long drive ahead of me this Thanksgiving weekend and have already downloaded a long list of books for the trip. You should too. Click the link in the description to start your seven-day free trial and get 25% off a premium membership. 
JR3 paints a picture of severe mismanagement by Sam and the gang, which is truly amazing considering that they raised billions of dollars from some of the largest VC investors in the world. Names like Sequoia, OTPP, Temasek and of course SoftBank. Always SoftBank. Now, according to the filing, FTX failed to keep proper books, records or security controls for the digital assets it held for customers. It used software to conceal the misuse of customer funds. And I guess in a way, the only thing that they were organized about was the misappropriation of customer assets in that they wrote code in order to do that. The filing also describes how FTX gave special treatment to Alameda Research, who still managed to lose money even when given an advantage in trading against customers. The complaint describes how FTX did not have an accounting department and instead outsourced that function. It's amazing that you would build a $32 billion financial firm that doesn't have an accounting department, but okay. That's JR3's problem, not mine. Reading on further, FTX didn't even have an accurate list of its own bank accounts or even a complete record of the people who worked for the firm. FTX apparently used an unsecured group email account to manage the security keys for its digital assets. Nice work there, Sam. I guess it's maybe more secure than a post-it note under your keyboard. Actually, it's, it's probably not more secure than that. Uh, the document discloses the secret exemption of Alameda Research from certain aspects of FTX.com's auto liquidation protocol. What that means is that while other customers will have been subject to margin calls and automated liquidation, Alameda was not. It also describes the absence of independent governance between Alameda, owned 90% by Bankman Fried and 10% by his rarely photographed partner Wang, and the dot-com silo in which third parties had put their money. Look, you guys are going to accuse me of making this stuff up because it sounds too ridiculous to be true, but I'm not and we're only getting going here. According to the filing, and these are the exact words taken from the court document, the debtors did not have the type of disbursement controls that I believe are appropriate for a business enterprise. For example, employees of the FTX group submitted payment requests through an online chat platform where a disparate group of supervisors approved disbursements by responding with personalized emojis. Yes, personalized emojis. I don't know, but maybe personalized emojis are more secure than off-the-shelf emojis. Who knows? It does really baffle me that the big Silicon Valley VCs funded something this sloppy and were so proud of their investment that they wrote now-deleted magazine-style articles about it for their website. In last week's video, I pointed out that the Sequoia partners were impressed that Sam was playing video games while he pitched to them. In their now-deleted article, they appeared to be impressed that he was good at the video game in question. Of course, the Financial Times looked into it, and apparently he's not actually very good at League of Legends. Apparently, the American politician AOC is significantly better than him. I mean, what research do these people do at all? It seems to me at this point that if Sam and his executive team had been pushed into the meeting at Sequoia in strollers and had thrown some toys and a bottle of milk into the face of one of the partners, they would have still funded FTX. Maybe the partners would have written a long article about how good his aim was. JR3 describes how one of the complicating factors in winding up the firm is the lack of internal records on decision making. Apparently, Sam Bankman Fried often used messaging platforms with an auto delete function and encouraged employees to do the same. I can't tell you how wrong this is in pretty much any company, not to mind a financial firm where if it was actually regulated, you'd be legally required to store all communications for later examination. 
As Richard Coffin, the plain bagel, pointed out in his video last week, FTX US described itself as being a regulated US exchange on its website, but FTX US was not registered with the SEC, as you might expect. It was instead registered as a money transmitter, which, as Richard points out, means that it didn't face much more regulation than TurboTax. Anyhow, among the assets listed in the document was $4.1 billion of loans from Alameda Research, $3.3 billion of which was to Bankman Freed, both personally and to an entity he controlled. In the filing, JR3 says that among the core objectives of the bankruptcy proceedings is a comprehensive, transparent, and deliberate investigation into claims against Sam Bankman Freed. So that is at least good to hear. The filing says that the fair value of the crypto assets held by the FTX International Exchange was $659,000 as of September 30th. It doesn't include an estimate of crypto assets owed to customers, but says that they are expected to be significant. It appears that FTX did not keep a record of this reasonably important number. In seeking rescue financing last week, Bankman Fried circulated a rough balance sheet showing about $9 billion of customer deposits. Against that $9 billion of deposits, the liquidators have found around $740 million worth of cryptocurrency. According to the document, they were able to move $740 million of cryptocurrency to offline cold wallets where it could be secured. But the company has already suffered a near $400 million hack of crypto just after it filed for bankruptcy. The filing highlights that even the balance sheet figures provided in the filing are likely unreliable because they were prepared when Bankman Freed ran FTX. JR3 explains that the FTX group had billions in investments other than cryptocurrency. However, the main companies in the Alameda silo and the venture silo did not keep complete books and records of their investments and activities. Bankman Fried's rough balance sheet that he was circulating last week showed $3.2 billion in illiquid private investments. It would appear that record keeping was so bad that right now JR3 has to dig through the movements of cash and press releases to work out what investments were even made. JR3 seems to be faced with the daunting task of making phone calls to a variety of VC firms and even private companies to find out if FTX has invested in any of them. Hi Elon, it's, uh, it's JR3 here. No, no, nothing to worry about. I'm pretty busy here at FTX. By any chance though, did SBF send you any money to invest in Twitter? No. Oh, okay. That's, that's fine. I was just checking. Hey, you wouldn't be interested in buying any of this Dogecoin that we have lying around here, would you? No? Okay. I just, just thought I'd check. In last week's initial bankruptcy filing, the combined assets and liabilities of FTX International, FTX US, and Alameda were estimated at between $10 billion and $50 billion, so quite a range. Matt Levine at Bloomberg describes the FTX story as reading like what would happen if you and a few of your friends from college set up an international financial exchange after a year or two of working entry-level jobs in finance. Your friends might be quite smart, they can code up a good-looking website, but they're lacking in the kind of hard-won expertise that's built up over many years of working in the industry. Experience in things like accounting controls and business processes for running a large financial organization. Your college friends don't really enjoy paperwork, they don't really understand how a large business is organized, and they feel too busy to get involved in these details. They move fast and they break things. When you see that the fund manager at Alameda worked for a bit over a year at Jane Street on a trading desk, and that the risk manager had a similar amount of experience at Credit Suisse, what that actually means is that they had those jobs just long enough to be trusted with the morning coffee run without making too many mistakes. 
this wouldn't be considered deep financial experience by any measure. An important point within these bankruptcy filings is that a jurisdictional fight over the company's legal proceedings has now emerged. JR3 has filed a voluntary Chapter 11 bankruptcy petition in Delaware, but there's a competing bankruptcy in the Bahamas. Officials in the Bahamas have filed a Chapter 15 bankruptcy in a New York federal court, asking a judge there to respect a liquidation effort that's commenced in the Bahamas. A Vox article came out on Wednesday where a journalist spoke with Sam Bankman-Fried over Instant Messenger, who expressed a lot of disdain for regulators. After that came out, JR3 filed a motion in Delaware, which amongst other things says, the debtors have credible evidence that the Bahamian government is responsible for directing unauthorized access to the debtors' systems for the purpose of obtaining digital assets of the debtors that took place after the commencement of these cases. The Bahamian securities regulator announced yesterday that it indeed had moved some of FTX's digital assets into cold storage last week for safekeeping. It appears that the suspected hack on November 12th was possibly Sam Bankman-Fried moving these assets into the custody of the Bahamian securities regulator. He would possibly prefer them to have jurisdiction than the Delaware courts. Not so long ago, VC investors tripped over each other in a rush to invest in Sam Bankman-Fried's cursed exchange. They described it as a safe haven in the wild west of crypto. VCs poured money into the company and had a great laugh about meme capital raises of $420 million split between 69 investors. Oh, the fun they must have had. Last week, SBF did the rounds again in Silicon Valley with a slapdash pitch of unformatted Excel spreadsheets filled with calculation errors and typos. One investor described it as an investment club level data room. The lack of formality that not so long ago seemed really charming was now just an embarrassment. If you missed last week's video explaining how everything fell apart at FTX, click here. Don't forget to check out Blinkist, our video sponsor, using the link in the description below. Have a great week and talk to you again soon. Bye.